burnt sienna but a very very light mix it must be I can just just a very 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 light okay so I'm gonna take that I'm gonna start putting that very light wash in don't make this first one too dark you can always darken up areas where you need to but this is your your underlying color remember in watercolors we start from light through to dark now this is my uh, I hope I don't pick up some there okay that's dry enough so let's go down here To leave that area between the bricks, couldn't you use like a wax resist technique to sort of show the, the, the cement in between the bricks? <laughs> yes. If you're doing a painting which is a, a, a large painting, where you're doing quite heavy bricks, um, I've never used it, to tell you the honest truth. Um, I've always used this like this light color that I'm using here now. Um, you'll see just now when we start coming into the concrete blocks or the, uh, the the masonry blocks rather, where I leave show you the 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 the, mas the, the mortar in between, and it's it's just your your contrast because your mortar is also not pure white. So we, when we come to, to the to the other area, I'll, sh I'll show you how we do it. You can do it, but it, it's too finicky because that mortar is so thin. You try and get wax, you know, to get your um, if you cut your wax that thin, you try and press down, it's going to break. So um, it's a good idea. What I'm saying is, if if you're using it for a very big painting, and you've got large blocks, you can. Okay, so I've got that into the oh yes, there's a little bit up top here as well. And just put that little piece in there. Okay, I think I'm gonna also do this walls here because that is also an underlying colour. We'll put the shadow over that. I wanna make it a little bit darker, it's in the shadow area. And then I'll come with a glaze over there to give it its shadow color. Let's make it a little bit darker. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Now, the interesting about sunlight and shadows is you need to remember this, is that in your shadow area, you're going to have more the true color of of the object than it is in the sunlight, because what happens is um, the sunlight is going to burn out um, a lot of your color. You take a white cosmos flower. You can try that. Take a, when you've got a, a lot of these white flowers will also be the same. You have a white cosmos flower. In the sunshine, out in the sun, it looks white, and it's, everybody calls it a white cosmos. But pick that cosmos, and then bring it into into the house or in deep shade, and you'll notice that cosmos is actually a light yellow. It's not white at all. So, um, have have a look. Study some quite a lot of the photographs that you see where you've got sunlight and you've got some shade into it. The, sh the shaded area is more your your true color. In other words, this is more the true color of the brick fog, you might say. And when it hits the sun, because a lot of it gets reflected, um, the sun gets reflected into your eye and, and it gives you a much lighter area. That's why you have a, few, a block of, uh, when we, you, you need three colors. You need your highlight, you need your your normal color, and then you need your shade color. In other words, you need those three tones to be able to give you um, a, a proper 3D effect. 
So let's do this one in here. Bring that down. I got that little. Don't forget the little bush that we're going to put in there. When you're doing something like this on the side, don't worry if you get little um, marks and stripes and stuff like that. Walls are very seldom um, very even. If, if they are, you will need to paint it also with a little bit of a um, movement in it. You'll see, in, in, in have a look at the example that... Um, in, in your notes, and you'll see just now, you'll see that especially this wall across here, there's, there's some even some little backwashes, in other words, little uh, cauliflowers and stuff. I've left it in because those are lovely little marks. You can have a, have a look at that. You can see in there, look at all those marks inside there. Beautiful. Takes away that absolute boring factor away. <clears throat> and can you have a look while you've got the, the main one on? Have a look at the lights. Um, on the wall, it get, gets lighter towards the left-hand side, where there's more where your sun is as well. And also, as it goes away from you, it gets lighter and lighter. You've taken away the boringness of the of of, of the thing and given it um, more perspective as well too. You've got to take that boringness away from everything. And if you look at that roof, it's even got a slight little um, hollowness to it, done on purpose. Take that hollow. Take I'll take it just adds to the to the character of the house. Don't try and use a ruler. <clears throat> okay, we got that. So let me just put the head right on that quickly. So we're gonna put the colour basic colour of the roof. Right, I'm going to mix up a grey colour. <clears throat> now, this is where I'm going to use some of the sky colour now. Hmm. You can see all the little marks. You see, it looks very rough inside there. These are all the little particles of your um, ultramarine blue. All the little granular particles. A lot of people don't like that. They use cobalt blue instead. But um, I... I tend to, to 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 like the ultramarine blue because at times it gives me that a bit of a character when it goes into the slight uh, roughness of the paper. At times I will use cobalt blue, but sometimes I need it like in in on your roof. You need this this type of granulation. It gives you that lovely lovely effect. So um, it's a bit too blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of alizarin crimson into it to give me a, a nice blue gray i'm off to a nice blue gray slightly on the warmy side then then the blue side and just this that i need a bit more oops don't put too much in otherwise I'll, let's see okay it's starting to give me a nice warm grey into the give it a test okay that's fine so I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to let me start on this side here It's almost like a slate grey, all over the area here with a slate. This is my first, my first layer, as it were. A 
I'm not worried whether there's any stripes in the in the paint. That's part of the character of the roof. Okay, there I've got my the lighter area. Let me do this one here quickly at the same time. If there's any stripes, just keep your brush horizontal and that gives you the lines of the tiles. And remembering that this side here is wider than this one, so you still get your um, effect of your uh, perspective going out that way. So now I'm going to darken this a little bit, a little bit more slightly more warmer color now and I'm going to drop that into this side because there's a little bit on the wet side here so they go in quite nice bleed in nice so you don't have a sharp sharp line Then I bring that in just a little bit past that. Now this area is starting to dry a little bit, so what I do is I take my a wet brush, a little bit, and then I wet very lightly the area here without lifting that paint, and then bring them together. And you see how they merge? They just disappear there like that. So take another wet brush onto this side. Just wet that a bit here. And uh, just join them together. So you get that nice little merging from your darker side of the roof through to the lighter. And I'm going to put in little darker spots now. a little bit more making a little bit darker and while that is nice and wet I can drop in a couple of areas here where you can have shadow from that onto this side it's a little bit darker there you get a few little areas up top here that nice little warmer area sort of coming at the top and if necessary I can Take a little bit of that and work into there. Okay. Time to do the same here quickly. Much darker here. You've got your shadow area from this part into there. Oops. All right. I'm just going to run some of that into the lighter area which is much more sunlit coming closer so I'm going to leave some of those other little marks in there now let's start putting a bit more of your um, burnt sienna we're going to make it a little bit darker and give it a test here in the sunshine area I'll put a little touch of blue into that just to give it a bit more gray color there we go touch it a little bit there was some of that nice gray so to give it that ground so the brick here in the shade I'm 
going to put wet that a bit there and just bring that in. Get you that bit of that sunshine area. Okay, take some more of that. And let's put a little bit on this side here. Then we start letting it run away. Get. Right, I don't want to make it too dark. Right, let's, let's take that off. Leave that as it is. Into there. Net. Okay, let's put the hair dryer on. Now these are all the necessary preparation that one has to do prior to actually starting to indicate the brick or the stonework. So a little bit more on the slightly orange. I'm going to put a bit more orange into that mix I've been using for the... Um, for the brickwork and I'm going to use it for this this area here and wet that and start running this Pulling some of that out this way, give you that variegated color, getting light as it goes far further away from you. So we got that. Cross in this one here. And let's do this. You notice I'm not trying to worry about the little mortars and stuff in between the blocks at this particular stage. It'll sort of come out on its own a little bit later on. So let's just do that. Just lift a little bit of that off. This wall here, I'm going to put a very light grey. So I'm going to put a little bit more blue into what I had for the tiles. And come back to... Let me just see. I'm just giving it a test. Okay. Go into this area here. Very light grey. That's a light, it'll dry a little bit lighter than this. So, okay, let's put the hair dryer on. <coughs> right, yeah, we've got all the lighter areas now. Now we're going to start. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> 
it's just Nolan falling all over the place here at the moment. <laughs> uh, fun was had by everybody. <laughs> okay, but we start a light. Now we're going to start working to the darker side now. I'm going to now make a nice little... Almost to, to red there, put some more blue into that. Like a purpley, purpley color. Now I'm going to take some with less water in. Because now I want to start putting that in there. There's going to be your, your darker shade. It can be a bit darker than that. I'm putting that purple across. What happened is. This is the shadow color. is It's normally either a blue purple or a, um, a ready color purple, and that's because of the sky. The sky is your blue, and your eye actually you don't normally see it with your eye. But you take a photograph, have a look at the shadows. You find that those shadows give you your 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 um, either a blue purple or slightly on the warmer ready purple, and uh, your eye compensates for it because otherwise you'd have blue reflections over everything. You don't see it with your eye, but you have to paint it in because you, you check your photograph. I've got lots of photographs that will show my students where uh, they don't believe me that the, especially the beginners, that the um, shade is actually a purpley color. Let's put that in there. Negative painting, bring it across. I'm not worried here whether there's marks or stuffing across here. Let's get this down. A bit, get a bit darker down the bottom here against the lighter color. So now it's, it's the tonal range is starting to be built up. So another thing is while we're busy with this one here, we've also got underneath the eaves, there's a shadow line that goes underneath there. It's, the sun is showing, throwing shadow in that area. Uh, I'll let that draw. Yeah, we've also got some of this going across here. Sun's coming from that, so this is throwing some shadow over there. Let's bring it a bit further and down just past that door so we don't have the shadow right on that corner. We bring that in. Very lightly. I'm doing this very, very lightly so that they don't disturb the the paint layer underneath. So we've got that shadow going across there. Now put a very much darker purple. It's gonna be in this area here. That's your shadow area. I'm going to put it in and lift out the color as I need it. So I put that in and now I can lift. Bring it to the tonal range that I want it to be. I'll leave this little corner down here a little bit darker as it gets into the deep into the corner. <coughs> 